Let's commit ourselves to the Lord. We have heard about our God who is able. He has all power in heaven and earth. He is eternal. He is almighty. He is able to do all things. Whatever he says, whatever he desires, if it's judgment, negative, he has the power to carry it out. If it's positive, promise, prophecy, he has the power to carry it out. Let's adore him. Let's exalt him. He is a great God, a mighty God. Lift him up in your heart. Humble yourself under his mighty hand. And commit yourself to obey him. And do his will always talk to the Lord. As you humble yourself, don't be like Nebuchadnezzar. Who is just humble, um, humbling himself with the word of mouth in a religious way. Today, he say God is great. Tomorrow, he exalts himself above God. That's why we must be sincere to look into our life. Is pride there? Haughtiness there? Self-will there? Self-centeredness there? Why not go before the Lord and say, Lord, I'll see myself. I'm like Nebuchadnezzar. But Lord, today, I want a change. I want a transformation. If you can change the heart of Nebuchadnezzar from a human heart to animal, there's nothing you cannot do. I know the haughtiness of my heart, the pride in my heart, the self-will in me, the self-centeredness, you can change. You can change. Lord, I surrender. I surrender. Before Calvary, I surrender. Let there be a true transformation in my life. That's safe. That Adamic nature that is always proud, self centered, haughty. Even though in the church I cry and weep, but when I get home again, my thoughts, my words, my action shows that this pride is still there. Lord, today, do a definite work. Do a definite work in my life. Help me. I surrender myself. I humble myself. Oh Lord, uproot from me this nature of Satan that made him to fall from that great position. Help me, Lord. 
I don't want pride in my life. I don't want self in my life. I don't want haughtiness in my life. It will do it for you. That's why Jesus, our Lord, died on the cross of Calvary. That's why he shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. If you will sincerely surrender yourself, your heart unto him, this very moment, he will do a definite walk, a lasting walk in your life. Open your heart unto the Lord. He will do it. He will do it. We must not wait till when God will humble us like he did to Nebuchadnezzar. We must not wait till he will dethrone us. You may not be maybe an earthly king or whatever, whatever position you are. Don't wait till God will dethrone you. The privilege you have in his kingdom, the position in his house. Don't wait till God will dethrone you. Go before Calvary today. Let that tendency of pride be totally, be completely uprooted from your heart. Calvary is able. He has done it for many. He will do it for you. Look at Paul the Apostle. God did it for him. Look at Peter. God did it for him. Look at many people. John, you know, the son of thunder. God did it for him. What can he not do? As he can do and bring judgment, so he can bring blessing. So he can bring transformation. So he can really you know, deal with Adamic nature. That thing that is setting us against God. Making us to become enemy of God. God is able to uproot it and remove it, and he will do it for you. Call upon him. Pray in faith. Pray depending on what Jesus, our Lord, has done on the cross. That's the only escape rule. That's the only way out for a man, and he will do it for you. The Lord will do it for you. Pray and call upon the name of the Lord. Make sure you are praying, praying with your understanding, praying intelligently to be sure that you are really dealing with self in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. If God is working in your heart, 
dealing with that Adamic nature, purging, purifying, and giving you Christ-like humility, then you need to tell the law that the faith to trust him, to hold on to him in every situation, in every circumstance, that you will remain faithful to the end, whoever may be in the congregation, whoever may be in the church, whoever may come or may not come, that you will be able to stand and recognize that the God of heaven, your loyalty goes to him first. Let's pray, God, give me that kind of faith to trust you, to depend on you, like Daniel, like Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they were able to stand and remain faithful to the word of God, despite the position, the power, and the threatening of Nebuchadnezzar. Call upon the name of the Lord. Pray that God will help you. That this God who is able, you'll fear him and fear him alone. And you'll be loyal and faithful to him in every situation. In the market, where they say, if you don't sacrifice this, if you don't pay for this, we are going to do this one for you. You remain steadfast and say, I will not sin against God. I will do the will of God. Call upon the name of the Lord. Maybe you are in the village, you are in the, you know, a town somewhere there and somebody is coming to the church and uh, you know he doesn't want to live right and you tell him you must settle this you know uh, issue of uh, the two wives if you want to really serve god and he said well if that is the case i leave your church i live with my money and you are not you're not going to be begging that a person you know you are serving a god who is able to provide for the need of his church. You'll be able to take your stand as a pastor. Help me. Increase my faith to trust you and be faithful to you even in the face of death persecution, opposition, it will help you. It will help you. Call upon the name of the Lord. Pray unto the Lord. Maybe you have been, you know, you are not able to stand. You are always rising and falling in the past. Today you compromise, tomorrow you repent. We have been told in this message, our God is able to keep us from falling. You will pray, oh Lord. I know you are able to keep me from falling, from backsliding, from compromising, from rising and falling. Lord, I pray from today, keep me by your power. Keep me by your spirit. Keep me by your truth. Keep me. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Rising and falling must stop in your life today. Inconsistency must stop in your life today. Compromise 
must stop in your life today. Oscillating between two opinions must stop in your life today. The Bible says we are kept by the power of God unto salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time. He's able to keep us. Open your mouth and pray. Depend on the God that is able. Trust him, the God that is able. Pray. I know you are able, Lord. Keep me to the end. Keep me without rising and falling again. Keep me without backsliding again. Keep me without compromising again. Keep me without oscillating between two opinions again. Keep me. Keep me to be steadfast, to be consistent, to be stable and balanced as a believer, as a worker, as a minister. Keep me, Lord. Keep me, Lord. He will keep you. Tell the Lord. He will surely keep you. He will surely keep you. He will uphold you. To the end. Call upon the name of the Lord. Wherever you are on the mission feed, God is able. Is able to keep you. Is able to sustain you. Is able to supply your need. Is able to help you. Is able to make you victorious. Is able to make you to stand before all the naval cardinals are there. Is able. Is able. Call upon the Lord. Pray with all your heart. The Bible says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Pray, Lord, help me that from today my mind will stay on you. My mind will not stay on any man, big man, great man, powerful man. Help me, Lord, that my mind will stay consistently on you. Help me, Lord. It will keep you in perfect peace. It will keep you in victory. It will keep you overcoming sin, overcoming self, overcoming Satan, overcoming the world. If your mind stay on him, In every situation, let your mind stay on him. Like Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they saw beyond Nebuchadnezzar and his fury and his fire. They were seeing the invisible God, the almighty God. And so all his power became so small before them. Pray that your mind will stay on God on Christ, on his word. Not on the men in the world. In Jesus' name, we pray. 
our heavenly Father, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God that is able, able to save, able to deliver, able to keep, able to help, and able to judge and abase those who live in pride. You are the great God of heaven. We thank you for the privilege to know you and to serve you and to belong to you. We worship your name. We reverence you. Accept our thanks and praises in Jesus' name. Almighty God, you have taught us through your servant. You have revealed to us your own mind. That you are able to judge, to punish, to abase all that live in pride. Whoever they are, whatever they possess in this universe, which you have created by your own hand and for your own pleasure. Lord of heaven, we have presented ourselves unto you today. Anything, any tendency, any nature, of Nebuchadnezzar, the nature of pride, the haughty nature, the self-centered nature. In anyone here who have presented himself before you, Lord, we don't want to wait till you will humble us. We are asking, O oh Lord of heaven, you will approach such nature from the heart of all who have cried unto you today in Jesus' name. Because of Calvary, because of the blood that our Lord Jesus Christ shed, because of the finished work of human deliverance from sin and the nature of sin, Lord, I pray you will deal with pride, this nature of Satan, in anyone here who is really humbling himself, crying unto you, even now, in Jesus' name. That no one, after this moment, will continue in pride will continue in haughtiness. But every one of us, Lord, either those who are just you know, surrendering their life to you, those of us who have been in the faith before, Lord, you will impart and impute into us Christ-like humility. Amen. That, Lord, who will live a life of humility, total dependence on you in all areas of our lives in Jesus' name. Lord, help us that our heart, our mind will stay on you. That we will trust you in every situation, in every condition. And before everyone, that no one, Lord, will intimidate us to compromise or to be disloyal to you wherever we are in this universe. In Jesus' name. When we are alone, when we are in the midst of believers, when we are, you know, in distant land or mission field or wherever we are in village or town, Lord, I'm praying that the faith that hold on to you and stand for the truth, like Shadrach, Meshach, 
Ebednego, you will give unto us. The faith that interprets the word of God fearlessly and faithfully like Daniel, Lord, you will give unto us. And the confidence and the trust in you that will make us to be able to boldly declare the truth of the word of God without fear of favor, either on the field of evangelism or on the pulpit of ministry you give to everyone in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, to have the confidence and trust in you. Because you have promised, you are able. Able to keep us from falling. Able to keep us steadfast. Able to keep us, you know, with boldness and confidence unto the end. In Jesus' name. Pray for our Father in the Lord. You have used... Lord, you have made him an example. We are praying that it will continue to be a shining example. Not only to, uh, you know, to the congregation here, but to the global audience. In Jesus' name, you will strengthen him. You will uphold him. And Lord, you continue to walk even more and more because we are promised as our day so shall our strength be lord as is day let his strength be in jesus name Amen. thank you lord because you have answered in jesus mighty name we pray Amen. another Amen. Amen. God bless you. We can be seated. Thank you for joining us on our program today. Perhaps you have responded to God's call to salvation, His call to come home and to experience His precious love. That call comes with a great promise, the promise that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you made the decision to follow Christ, we want to stand alongside you in your newfound faith and help you in any way we can. Please get in a good Bible-believing church and make achieving heaven your goal. Also, please visit us at www.gckhq.org to connect with us and please send us your prayer requests. We will be glad to hear from you. You can also visit us at any one of our local churches located in a city near you by going to the link listed below. Praise the Lord. Shall we have a word of prayer? Our Father, we thank you, Lord, for this retreat. Thank you for what you have begun to do, to reveal, and to actualize in our lives. I pray that the study of your word will give light unto everyone and will make us to, to see who Christ is and what he came to do and what we will do in our life. I pray that the Holy Spirit will interpret the word of God to every heart that listens now in Jesus' name. Pray that the Spirit of God will take control and the word of God will be alive in every heart. Thank you because you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And let the church say, Amen. We are taking Retreat Bible Study 1 today. Christ, the perfect sacrifice. Christ, the perfect sacrifice. Our text is in John chapter 1. I'm going to read from verse 1 to 5, verse 9, 10, and then verse 12 and 13. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, 
and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. I read from verse nine, from verse eight. It was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. I read in verse uh, 12, But as many as received him, to them gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld this glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. From here, we see the account that John gave concerning the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel according to St. John introduces the Lord Jesus Christ and gives us inspired revelation of him. This revelation was inspired by the Holy Spirit himself. Therefore, it is unknown to the natural man who has not been taught by the Spirit of God. Unknown to the natural man who has not been taught by the Spirit of God. We are told in 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I read in verse 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. What we are learning today is inspired by the Holy Spirit. In this chapter, specifically, John, reveal, John reveals Christ to us as number one, the Word. The Word. In the beginning was the Word. And reveal him again, number two, as God. And the Word was God. Number three, he revealed him as a creator. All things were created by him. In verse 4, he revealed him as light, the light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. We see that in verse 9. Number 5, he revealed him as the life, the life. Through him comes eternal, everlasting, abundant life. Reveal him as, as, as light. Number 6, he revealed him as the only begotten of the Father, the only begotten of the Father. He has been in heaven with the Father from all eternity. You see that in verse, he said in verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. He came with glory to the world. In verse 14, and the world was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten Son, of, as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Number seven, he revealed him as a lamp of God in verse 29. Number eight, he revealed him as the eternal one, the eternal one. Although Christ came after John, he still acknowledged that Christ was before him. You see that in verse 13. This is he of whom I said, after me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. He, 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 he acknowledged Christ as the one who has been before him. Number nine. He revealed him as the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. You see that in verse 33. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he that baptized with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost empowers us and energizes us. Number 10, he revealed Christ as the Messiah. The Messiah. You see that in verse 41. Number 11, he is revealed as the Son of God. The Son of God. You see that in verse 49. And then number 12, he revealed him as the King of Israel. In the same, in the same verse 49, the, king, the, the Son of God and the King of Israel. And number 13, he revealed him as a ladder that helps us get to heaven. The ladder 
that gets us to heaven. Through Christ and Christ alone can we access heaven. Through Christ and Christ alone can we have access to the Father. So Jesus Christ is the way to heaven. Is the way to heaven. No other way leads to heaven. Every other way is foolishness. Every other way will, will eventually crumble. But Jesus Christ is the way to heaven. He gives us light. Christ is a giver of light. He said, I'm the light of the world. He that walketh in me, he that believeth in me shall not walk in darkness. It's a life. The life that, that removes death in our life. It's a grace. He has the grace and the truth that sets us free. He reveals the Father in fullness to us from this, from this, uh, from this chapter. He takes our, he's the one that takes away our sin. He's the one who knows the secret of all men. No, not, nothing can be hidden from, from, uh, from him. He knows everything. You know, when, when, uh, when men at hand asked Jesus, how did you know me? And Jesus responded that be, 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 while you were under, under the tree, I saw you. He is the Zebila of every secret. Nathanael said unto him, verse 48, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. Look at, uh, look at, uh, and Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the son of God, thou art the king of Israel. He knows every man, he knows everything. Then he is our perfect sacrifice. Jesus Christ is our perfect sacrifice who bear our sins on the, on the cross. He's our sin bearer. He took our sins by his death on the cross. He's our substitute which will have died in our sin and go to hell. But he, he came as substitute. Our, he's our savior, the savior from sin. The Bible says, he came, he came to save us from, from sin. It's, 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 it's our Savior. In Matthew chapter 1, Jesus came to this world for the purpose of our salvation. He was sent by the Father to redeem us from sin and to save us from eternal punishment. Matthew chapter 1, in verse 21, And he shall bring forth his son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. There is no Savior apart from Jesus Christ. Nobody can save you from sin except Jesus Christ and Christ alone. This Jesus Christ that's revealed to us in the, in the gospel according to St. John is superior to John. Is superior to John, John the Baptist. Is superior to angels, superior to Moses, all the prophets of the Old Testament and founders of every religion. Christ is superior and greater than all of them. That takes us to the first point in our study. The supremacy of Christ Jesus. The supremacy of Christ Jesus that is, is supreme, is higher and greater and mightier than any human being born into this world, both before and now and forever. Christ, this, uh, the supremacy of Christ. We are going to see point two under our study, the superiority of Christ to John. The superiority of Christ to John. John the Baptist who introduced him, Jesus Christ was superior to him. And then finally, we are going to see Jesus Christ, our, uh, the sacrifice of Christ, our justifier. The sacrifice of Christ, our justifier. By his death on the cross and his resurrection for our sin, he justifies us. Let's take the, the first point. The supremacy of Christ Jesus. Can we say that together? The supremacy of Christ Jesus. I, re, I go back to John chapter 1 again. John chapter 1. I read from verse, uh, from verse 14. John chapter 1 from verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and, uh, and truth. Full of grace and truth. Look at verse. Uh, uh, look, look at verse. Uh, verse eighteen. He said, "No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, He had declared Him." Here we see, and the world. Uh, we see Jesus Christ as a world who came to this world. He became flesh for the purpose of our redemption, and the world was made flesh. 
and dwell among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and glory. That's what you see in verse 14. Here John talks about the world. In the beginning was the world. That world is Christ. Here John talks about the world. He talks about the personality and the everlasting nature of the world. The personality and the everlasting nature of the world. He is God, yet he came to dwell among us. He is God, he came to dwell among us. In, in 1 John chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5, I read from, uh, I, I, read, I read verse 7 there. 1 John chapter 5, I'm reading in verse 7. It's talking about Jesus Christ, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. He says, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. These three are one. He, uh, he talks about the personality of Christ uh, and his everlasting nature of the world. He has been with the Father from the dateless past. He is God, yet he came to dwell among us. He came to dwell among us. Even from the Old Testament, Christ's existence was, uh, was prophesied that he will come into this world and deliver us from our sin. In Matthew chapter 1, verse uh, uh, 21. But before then, Isaiah declared that a virgin shall, uh, shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Let's look at it. Isaiah chapter 7, in verse 14. Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. Emmanuel means God with us. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Jesus. Christ's position is very clear in the scriptures. He is above the angels, greater than the angels. He is above the angels. He is the creator of, of all that we see and the one we don't see, both in heaven above and on earth and below the earth. He was in the form of God before he was made flesh. That's why we are told that he was, he has, uh, there's a record in heaven that Christ has been with the Father from the beginning. But he came to dwell among us in the flesh. While among men, is he retained his glory. Even though he came to the world in the form of a man, he retained his glory. He retained his divinity. He retained his deity. He was different because he is divine. Different from all human beings because he came from God and is God himself. Because he took the form of a man, that's why when he was in the world, he, he, was, he, he felt tired, he felt hungry, he felt thirsty, and all that. That shows that, that, that shows the, his humanity. So Christ came into this world for the purpose of our redemption. And that's why the Lord brought him into this world. He came to set us free and to deliver us. He came so that we might have life eternal. As God, he would not have gone through the excruciating pain of the cross. But because he came, he made himself of no reputation. He deliberately humbled himself for the purpose of our redemption. In Philipp Let's go to Philippians chapter 2. I read there from verse 6. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 6. He came purposely as a man for the purpose of our redemption. But then, what, what happened? What happened? Let's see what the scripture declares. Philippians chapter 2, I read from verse 6. Who being the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. He became man so that we can become, we can become the sons of God. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. And became obedient unto death, on the, uh, even the death of the cross. He died on the cross for the purpose of our redemption. But after dying for our sin, and, and he was buried and rose again, the Father exalted him. Look at verse 9. Wherefore, God also highly exalted him, 
and give him a name which is above every name. That at the, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. His, his, his humiliation as a man for the purpose of our redemption actually brought his exaltation. The Father highly exalted him and give him a name which is above every name. Today, the name of Jesus excels every other name in the world. As we embrace Jesus, who is full of grace and truth, we will experience something. Number one, number one, as we embrace Jesus Christ, who is full of grace and truth, we will experience, number one, the saving grace. The saving grace. The Bible says, by grace are you saved. The grace that saves is in Christ Jesus. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, for by grace are you saved. Number two, we experience sanctifying grace. Sanctifying grace. It, 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 it cleanses us from all our sin by the blood that he has shed. He not only saves, he cleanses, he purifies, and purges all our sins away. If we confess our sins unto him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and, and to cleanse us from all iniquity. Number three, you experience spiritual, uh, sorry, spirit giving grace. Spirit giving grace. Spirit, the spirit that gives you the grace is in Christ. That we, 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 hear in, we, we read in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, is the, is the one that gives us the power of the Holy Spirit. For you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. He is the giver of the Holy Spirit. The giver of the Holy Spirit. Number four, we experience serving grace. We, we receive grace to serve him acceptably. Hebrews chapter 12 in verse 28. We receive grace to serve the Lord acceptably. Whatever the challenge in our service to God, he gives us a, 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 a serving grace. The grace that helps us to serve effectively and serve acceptably and serve, uh, 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 serve in a way that God will be glorified. Look at Hebrews chapter 12 in verse uh, 28, we're told there, wherefore, we're, we're receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace, the grace to serve. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Acceptable service is only possible by the grace of God. That's why you need Christ in your life so that he can give you the grace not only to know him but to serve him also. So he's the one that gives us the power to serve the Lord. Whatever the challenge of our service will go.